torn up town. No postcode envy. Welcome back to the cafe. Now, that might have seemed a little weird, but it'll all make sense in a couple of seconds. We are very excited, too, because joining us from LA via Skype is postmodern jukebox founder and music genius Scott Bradley. Scott, thank you so much. It is such an honour to have you with us. We can't wait for you to get to New Zealand in the next couple of days. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Hey, look, our absolute pleasure. Now, for those that don't know about postmodern jukebox, how, Scott, would you describe it to them? Postmodern Jukebox basically takes pop music and puts it in a time machine. So if you imagine your favorite songs you know, that are on the radio now, or your least favorite songs that are on the radio now, depending on your point of view, we're taking all those songs, you know, Rihanna, Justin Bieber, Lady Gaga, all of them, putting them kind of through a, a, an old-timey filter and showing them how they would sound if they were recorded in the 50s or the 40s or the 20s. So it's this whole kind of universe that we've kind of brought through life through the work of all these talented performers. and. You know, the show itself is basically, it's the kind of show that Frank Sinatra would go to back in the 40s. It's my elevator pitch. <laughs> I love it. Okay, so what was the light bulb moment, Scott? When did you sit back and go, yes, this is going to work? So, uh, you know, it started when I was living in New York and I was trying to find work as a jazz pianist and I was having a lot of difficulty. And, uh, you know, I, I love this older styles of music, you know, swing, jazz, Motown, things like that. But it was hard to get other people into it. And then... You know, I, I just decided to play around with the idea of taking songs that, you know, were familiar to everybody, you know, songs that were on the radio, and just imagining what they would sound like if they were recorded in the style of my favorite artists and you know, put a few of them out online and instantly went viral, which has been uh, just kind of a crazy thing. And more and more people were sending in ideas of songs. People were getting involved in a way, you know, in a way that I knew that it was something, that there was something there. And, you know, that was about five years ago. And since then, we've toured four continents. We've done sold out shows everywhere. We've hit two million subscribers on YouTube. Uh, yeah, it's been crazy. OK, I love that you still record in your living room. I absolutely love that. What sort of music did you listen to growing up? It's the weirdest thing. It was, um, you know, I, I took piano lessons as a kid and I hated it. I couldn't get into it. But then I heard uh, the song Rhapsody in Blue, well, the piece, the concert piece. And it was interesting to me because it combined the sound that I, you know, classical music, which I knew about, with jazz, which is a completely different sound and kind of fused them together. And I just thought that was so interesting, the way that it was done. And that led me to just discover, I was like, I wanted to learn about this music. And I started to diving into jazz, learning about Louis Armstrong and Duke Ellington and all those guys. And then from there, got into Motown and all these other, you know, Stevie Wonder and all these great performers. And, you know, it just kind of left me as, you know, I was a kid, I was maybe 13 or 14 years old. And I just remember thinking, man, the music in the past was so much better than what was here now. And I don't know if that was true or not, but for whatever reason, I just, it really spoke to me. And, you know, so in some ways, this is really like my childhood dream come true. Okay, it's time to do the good old name drop, Scott. What names have you been endorsed by? We've gotten endorsements by so many, which has been crazy. We've gotten uh, Beyonce, uh, Lord from New Zealand. Uh, we've gotten um, just re Megan Trainer, uh, even Celine Dion. I mean, big artist Bon Jovi. We've had you know, so many celebrity endorsements, which has been pretty cool. Yeah, well, you can't complain with that. Very awesome. And, you know, I said right at the start you're a bit of a musical genius, and it's because you put songs into different styles. But do you know which type of style you're going to put a song into? Um, sometimes, not always, though. I, I think a recent one we did, we just did one that went viral that was Mbappe's doo-wop. And, I mean, that was, like, that was just, like, an obvious choice for me. I'm like, the song is Mbop. It sounds like a doo-wop syllable. So, you know, that was something that it, it just naturally kind of fit. But, I mean, other ones I've tried in different styles before kind of settling on, on one. Um, you know, an interesting one that I thought was cool was we took Sweet Child of Mine, Guns N' Roses classic, and kind of reimagined it in this New Orleans blues setting, uh, kind of as if it was sung by Bessie Smith, you know, one of the great blues artists of the 20s. And it's just so funny how well it works. But, I mean, it's the same song. But the meaning is completely different. You know, it sounds like, like a mother singing to her child. You know, it's, it's a, a crazy thing. Now, we were just looking at some clips there of your band, and I've noticed when I look at the clips, sometimes they're different. So do you, do you have a set band, Scott, or do you use a rotating cast of band members? And how do you pick them? Well, it's a little bit of, of both. I mean, we have it's a collective, so we have about, you know, 50 or 60 people that have been in videos and they have done tours with us, and people are always coming in. Even within a tour, people will come in and out sometimes. Uh, 
So it keeps it challenging, but in a good way, because it means that every show is going to be kind of unique. We're going to have a different set list. We're going to get to do different material. Uh, but the one thing I like to look for is I like to make sure there's a balance of different types of voices, you know, so we get a singer that can really just nail that soul stuff and a different singer that can do more of a jazz kind of sound. And then just add in, you know, other talent that, that does unique things, you know, tap dancing, things like that. Uh, so it's kind of like, yeah, it's, it's kind of like being a chef, chef or something. You know, you're putting together a lot of different ingredients and, you know, with the goal of just making, you know, just the perfect show. Awesome. Scott, thank you so much for taking the time to join us and good luck with all of your New Zealand shows. I know there's some very excited people. We can't wait to have you here. We'll see you soon. All right. Thanks so much. Take care. Well, that was Scott Bradley from Postmodern Jukebox. They're playing in seven centres across New Zealand, starting off in Christchurch on Monday. Now you can check out postmodernjukebox.com for all the show details. Do not miss out on your tickets.